right. We have a special uh, episode here for Ohio, and we're going to talk about legalization and the efforts that we can, you can do to help legalize uh, marijuana. Hey, guys. Let me uh, do my... Here we go. <laughs> uh, Don, if you want to start, introduce yourself, and then we can lead around the uh, circle. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just put, briefly touch on you what our, our chapter is doing locally, then I'll hand off to Priscilla when it comes to 210. She's the pro on that one. So uh, what we're doing locally is, you know, citizens ballot initiatives, like I was talking earlier, you know, where we found that by municipalities that the Ohio Constitution allows municipalities to adjust penalties of the Ohio Revised Code within that municipality through a citizens ballot initiative. So we chose to reduce the penalties for small amounts of marijuana, anything less than 200 grams, which is the cutoff for uh, misdemeanor to felony range. So by doing that, we move that to zero, and we're doing this with a citizen ballot initiative, and we're going town to town, city to city, and we're so, having huge success with it. So right you know, now, oh, bigger sorry. ones has already adopted the language to council, like Cleveland, Cincinnati, all of those has already adopted it. Is so, Ohio's the second, or no, the tenth biggest state, I think, in population. And uh, uh, this is the tactic you guys are choosing is to go county by county? Is, no, is that... city by city. Oh, city by city. Yeah, it has cool. to be done by municipality. There's only three counties that can be done as a county because wow. of the current laws. Could you, you guys do it in cities, Lisa? But you can't do counties. There's three counties you can do. One of them is Cuyahoga. Wow. The other two I'm not familiar with yet. So That would be interesting because Cuyahoga covers quite this is a what area. local people can do you know, you know yeah. i got a job i work every day and i still do these initiatives you know with a chapter so you know if you have seen our facebook page you've seen some of our victory pictures and and we've already got two uh, uh initiatives completed this year with the help of smc and macarthur so we've got two already in the books and we're looking maybe at another three or four more before this cycle's over Wow. So how many total do you guys, city uh, cities do you have down now? I believe right now the count's at 23. Wow. That's got some of the major ones. And Priscilla, right. you're so part down of here In the southeast from Logan, we're mopping up the little towns. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. You and know, and that just goes to show you that, that those little towns. But the reception's unbelievable. You know, everybody, we're having good reception about this. It's been really easy. Oh, people what? register to vote. It wouldn't ever register. Because like, Ohio's a, a, a Republican heavy state, right? I mean, like DeWine, but it's so funny. You know, people look at red and, and, and blue, and I just think it's the stupidest thing, right? Like, we're all Americans. We all want to be treated the same. Like, I don't want you to be treated any less. Like, I I go to a store and buy weed, and like I smoked this morning, and then I, I, I walk past a cop, and nothing happens. Like, my world is a hell of a lot different than your world goes. But, you know, as it goes, because you're, Don, you're, you've been doing, like you said, the, the small states. And I imagine Priscilla, because you're a lobbying director, are you are you coordinating all the big cities? Is that what's going on? I, I did do um, Cleveland and I worked with Columbus and Cincinnati and Dayton as well. So I work more legislatively. I do help petition and do the campaign and signature gathering with the team. Um, my focus is pri primarily on Ohio House Bill 210 right now and getting lobbying and stuff like that situated for our state. This is really more of like a people issue than it is a party issue. So it would be really nice if the state could eliminate the Democrat Republican side, which we are a Republican based state. But if we could separate the parties from this and really focus on the issue that the people deserve this and the rights, the racial disparities, the inequalities that have been happening around our state, can really end by passing House Bill 210. So 210, is this going to be uh, medical or is this a uh, uh, recreational use? Um, so neither. It is um, a full statewide decriminalization. So oh. just like they did in the 70s, they decriminalized at 100 grams, their penalty and everything. So what we did is took the same decrim language um, that's passed in these 23 cities already. Um, so we got 
currently about 3 million people protected under this. Wow. We're asking the state of Ohio under House Bill 210 to now equal that protection. The people spoke. Now it's yeah. time that they do their job and equal the protection for everybody in our state. Um, due to the racial disparities, we've also asked for automatic expungement. So if you've ever been uh, in charged or <laughs> anything under the marijuana uh, Ohio revised code, we're asking them to automatically expunge. Mm. And then another huge thing, um, this hasn't been done in any other state yet for decriminalization, uh, would include a 12 plant home grow per person. Oh my God. That is huge for the state of Ohio as well. Yeah. So how, how much, wow, that is, that, that's huge. You know, and I really like how you guys approach it as far as decrim, right? Like, a lot of these states who are getting pushback, it's because they legalized it, right? Like, and then the the a holes, the prohibitionists, the the guys who just the, aren't looking out for your best interest, they sue the state and say, "Well, that's not how you legalize it. A state can't legalize it because it's federally illegal." So the decrim aspect, wow, and then the uh, uh, the the home growth. So, what kind of? Uh, I mean, Don, you're seeing small communities, uh, and then uh, Priscilla, I imagine the cities. Always the cities are, are always progressive. Like, I imagine as a whole, Ohio is doing like forward thinking, like, yes, we want this. It's going to be income. It's going to be money. As a matter of fact, I was going to uh, uh, share with you guys an article that, like, because I mean, this is going to be a huge deal if, if, if that does happen. But um, what is this? Uh, Normal put out there that legal marijuana has brought over 300,000 full time jobs, right? Like, we're talking money, we're talking people's livelihoods. Paying bills, electric bills, giving back to the community. I, I, I mean, like, what? How many industries are in Ohio? Like, what? Because this would be a great. Ohio is a nice place to like go camping, right? It's not the, not the beachy, de tourist designation, but you guys have a nice uh, uh, countryside. And uh, I think, like, what other industries out there? Because this would be huge for you guys. You're saying the end the. Uh, marijuana industry as of right now it's just close to the ohio medical marijuana control program um they've decided all the licensing and everything they actually did just agree to do 73 dispensaries across the state um versus we were at like 50 so that did just actually increase um about 25 but other than that they keep it very limited right now um and that decrim wouldn't change that honestly all we're doing is asking the state to really just like jaywalking in a sense, you know how they don't ticket or find they kind of just close a blind eye to it. Yeah. Um, so under this decrim, we're really just asking them to not pay attention to marijuana, such as a jaywalking ticket. It, it, it just occurred to me too. Cause I mean, I smoke a lot of weed, but uh, <laughs> like, cause you, it says lobbying director in your title and Ryan, you, you talked about how the guys, the other guys are the ones that get the signatures. You're actually talking to the politicians, right? Like you're dealing with these, uh, uh, for lack of a better person, Matt Gates is of the world. It's like, like you're just saying like, Hey, your constituents want this, right? Are you talking to the actual politician and what kind of vibe are you getting? Where's, where's the pushback? Like, I know, like I just pulled up here, the, uh, Ohio, uh, 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 you guys is a legislator, um, uh, website with the bill. And I know in Washington state, I don't know about this one. Uh, you can tell me if you know how to navigate it better, but I'm able to click on an issue and I can contact my, my legislatures right away through that website. Are you able to do that? Can people contact your legislatures through the website and say, I support HB 210? Um, I'm not 100% sure through that website. Now, I do know it is in the Criminal Justice Committee. So we are waiting for a response on that. Sure, sure. We'll probably let her uh, drive and be safe for a second there. Uh, uh, Jolie, uh, what is your role? You're, you're, I'm sorry again. Uh, you said, you earlier, said earlier. I'm just, I'm just trying to catch everybody in, get a piece of the the conversation because you guys are all normal, but you're also Don. What was that? Sensible or, or Mike? The uh, uh, the the group, the bigger group. Sensible yes, movement the coalition. Movement. Okay, sensible movement coalition. Well, yeah, they're both pushing for the the initiatives, you know, to decrim from city to city, town to town. Okay. Um, so that's that 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 like sensible. Said, okay. In the room earlier before we we got on, you know, um, I'm loosely affiliated with them. You know, I I got linked up with Don and and uh, you know, kind of just told him, hey, I know Miggy. We talk. Um, it would be great to get you guys on the show to you know get the message out there. To more people you know the more people that see it and hear it 
um, and that, you know, we can inspire to get involved because that's what it takes. It takes the citizens because that's what this is, a citizen initiative, you know, and, and I understand the, the apprehension with people, you know, nervous to get involved with it, don't want their name to get out there or tied to it, maybe because their employer or, you know, their spouse's employer, you know, there's a lot of different reasons that people don't want that out there, but yeah. you know, that's what it takes. You know, it takes us to get out there in the public and make these connections because anybody can do it, you know, in the grand scheme of things in Ohio, I'm not doing a whole lot. You know, I try to go out and help get signatures. I try to make connections, share information, you know, anything I can do to further the, these causes, you know, yeah. and, and, um, you What's know, hard? I think like, yeah, you know, HB 210 would be huge for Ohio. That's a huge oh step. And, and it almost, I feel like it softens the blow, like you said, as far as it's not full legalization. So all of that business that comes with it, with the regulations and all trying to figure all that stuff out, this is something that's going to affect Ohioans immediately, you know. Oh. And, and, and just think, like, you guys would, could develop a culture of, like, no ignorance. Like, people would know, like, Hey, all these potheads aren't crashing cars like it's bumper cars. Like all these potheads aren't, you know, uh, uh, like Tom and I were talking about, like you know, the the, the fear mongering where you don't want your surgeon to be high on marijuana. Yeah, I don't want him fucking taking shots either. That's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like this ignorant way that we fear monger the consumption. Like I drove to work this morning. I smoked a lot of weed, and then I <laughs> made some, you know, did some chores, and then I drove to work. Like. Yeah. Cannabis driving is not what this 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 bullshit fear mongering. Uh, uh, we're like, I'm gonna make all of a sudden left turns up, turn right. You know, it's not flying a helicopter. <laughs> you know, well, and, as okay as these laws are, so are all all the prejudices that come along with it. You know, and and overall, I don't think that that's the general consensus in the public that this is a really bad thing. I think it's something that you know is is perpetuated through you know the lawmakers and um, you know, these old ideals, maybe, you know, wh whoever their predecessors were, you know, this is something that they're carrying on for them. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to make heads or tails of it because it's so ridiculous yeah. that we're here in 2021 and we're still fearing this, you know, when it's more than cigarettes, alcohol. I mean, sugar is more dangerous than cannabis. You know, it's like, yeah. It's what? time to end this. And then all the harm that, not only all the benefits that come from the use of cannabis, but all the harm that comes from the prohibition, it's terrible. There's more important things that need to be taken care of than busting somebody for wanting to use a substance that makes them feel better. You know, Priorities, that's right? Well, like, like, this is the weirdest... You know, I've been doing this podcast now with Tom talking about cannabis issues for two years now. And sometimes, like... I don't know if you guys feel it like the vibe where it's like sometimes it feels like dead space. It's like this is just a redundant conversation. It's just fucking pot. <laughs> like, but this affects lives. Like, like, like I was telling you guys earlier, you know, 312,000 jobs in legal states. Like, this would bring economy. So, what is the vibe in Ohio though for cannabis? Like, like most states have a culture, you know, there's a there's a different like a, you you like you you can tell like a Brahma, right? Like I go into cities. Most likely, weeds accepted. Are there any festivals? Or is there any culture out there? Uh, anybody? <laughs> yeah, big time. There always has been. I mean, there's been a strong cannabis community ever since I can remember, you know. But it's always kind of been a don't ask, don't tell type of thing. It wasn't like wave your flag all over the place, which some people did. But it's kind of just like it was an acceptable thing in almost all socioeconomic you know, sections of the community, you know, from the rich down to the poorest. I've, I've smoked with tons of people, you know, and I'm not going to go on, you know, a big list of people that I've smoked with, but I mean, you'd be surprised, you know, of like who actually consumes it here and there or on a regular basis. Oh, totally. Yeah. And we're actually polling now at a national level at about 70% of Americans want legalization and proper access to cannabis. So right. that's enough to really push the state. Now, I will tell you at a state level, their minds aren't there. They, they still mm. still do the fear mongering and all that. So without people really engaging either by change.org or reaching out by a call or an email, 
they really don't know. The experts is really the cannabis community. And until they really step up and engage with the state house, we're always going to keep battling them and they're going to continue to win because they are the policy and the lawmakers. Yeah. So if everybody in the state don't really rise up against the state and tell them, they don't know. They can't just listen to me or Jolie or any of us on here. You know what I mean? They really need to hear it from the people. Yeah. Um, the best way I heard it the other day is the state house is a place for the people. You know right. and, it. <laughs> and if you're 18 and over, you have a voice, right? I think most people feel oppressed and tired in this conversation, but there's a real chance. I mean, weed is more popular than any presidential candidate, right? Like it's more popular. It's up there with the rock. There's a the weed and rock, you know, there's popularity. So like, how can you go wrong in Ohio? Like why do you guys, so Priscilla, because you are the lobbying director. I mean, who are your targets? Who who do you know is like these are the minds that we got to change? These are the guys who are so obstinate and so not freaking doing a thing. And then who are the ones that are like they're on board? Like, do you have a list? Um, there's more. I, I don't really want to get into parties and cause enemies. <laughs> um, we we've definitely had a lot of support um, on the Democratic side. Um, we've had some Republican support, but really Republicans, um, once again, they're making this a party thing about you need bipartisan support. And really, it's the the people. If they would just listen to the people and take the party uh, away, listen to the people, this is the American people. And what we seriously, want. though, I mean, because I mean, like Don's doing the small and, then, and and I see the it's a great tactic, you know, hit the cities, hit the small towns because. You know, there's always that way. Some small towns have the money. There's a lot of people in small towns that have a shit ton of money. And then in the cities, there's just a lot of people that have a lot of influence. And and and, and like Don, you 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 said you had the three wins last year, right? For county right. and yep. or, or yeah. And then so what are your because these people are their minds are changing. They're seeing that this is not the drug that they're told that people are gonna right. like stab random children and kick puppies and yep. you know what is their other you argument? know, I, you know I, I went door to door so i know you know pretty much in in the smallest towns what to what they think you know and overwhelmingly people support this you know you still get your uh no get off my porch and door slammed in your face and that kind of stuff still but a vast majority of it is supportive very much I just I don't like understand. I say, the, go ahead. Oh, I was just say I just don't understand because like uh, you know I've never been to Ohio personally. Like, I got a cousin that lives out there, um, but like I've been through parts of like that would be considered like the Appalachian type country, right? In Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, where I used to travel in the in the, in, in the country, and I, I know folk, right? Like people who are gritty, uh, down to earth country folk. You know, these are the ones that are also the obstinate ones who don't want to like. It's okay to drink, but you smoke the marijuana, like. You would think these these hardworking folk would understand now, like it's just the plant, you toil the soil. This is just another thing that you're given, and and we've been stigmatized. The the, the plant has been stigmatized. Like, what other convers what what other talking points are you hearing though? As far as like, why not? Like, are you I hearing heard, more studies? I heard <laughs> not really. Um, the studies are really more on our side than anything at this point. Um, we've even had like a chief of police say, how is it fair to say that we're going to do this to decriminalize for people, but yet we're still drug testing and our officers could be fired or our fire department could be fired. So then you get into other issues like workforce protections and, and rights for the people. So these are all things, once again, that our state just don't have answers for. And we're all trying to get answers, but it's step by step, just like the local cities. It took the local cities to even start the conversation at the state house. Oh, wow. So your strategy, you think, really helped to influence the influence, the overall uh, conversation as far as knocking down. The, I mean, it's true. It's dominoes, right? Like, I always yeah. joke that Prop 215, the California medical prop, was the gateway to legalization because everybody saw that California then collapse. You know, I mean, at least not because of weed. They got their own issues. But, you know, it's just ridiculous that this is such a stigmatized, uh, hateful thing because you're helping your people. You're. And in your medical program, I know Michael's talked about before how it's kind of 
you know, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but. And we really lack access for patients and then the funding for it. We run into patients that just don't have that kind of money. And it's unfair that why, why would they still be prosecuted if they had the same limits? So the 200 grams still fall under the same uh, as the medical program for the 90 day supply, basically. So it's like, why not just give these people the same protection, whether they have a medical card or not? Let's just even the playing field all across the board in the state of Ohio. Seriously, though. I mean, like Michael was saying earlier, you know, I, at least myself, too, I, I'm kind of like him where I've been volunteering in a bunch of organizations, but I've never like paid dues. You know, my dues are my time, right? You give, or, or your your physical sacrifice of actually holding a little board at the at the parade and shit. But not everybody can do that. That's the most valuable thing to an organization is when people give their time. Right, but and that's the thing is like for you guys for HB two ten, which would be a wonderful bill to pass through. Uh, there's got to be way. I know, like normal, sometimes when they have a campaign, I don't know. Maybe you guys, since you are normal, you can talk to the the, the headquarters, but. They have coders that are able to create that. Like I was saying, you go to the website through the, your legislation, it'll click one click, and then you can hit all your people in, in your district in charge of you. Yes, we've already been approached by National Normal with this very thing that you're talking about, and we've got to, we'll be setting this up really soon. They've nice. offered to set us up with this type of system, just like you mentioned. And the, currently right now, if they do go on the change.org um, to support House Bill 210, um, that will automatically go to the lead, the people that it needs to go to in the committee uh, to show the support of the people that signed the change.org. I forgot about change.org. Yep. Let me look that up real quick. Well, the one for national will go directly really to the representative. Correct. This does too. It, it goes to all the representatives that yep. we personally picked. And I mean, that's going to be huge, though. And that's like what, what Michael was saying earlier was the uh, you don't want to put your name on stuff. People are afraid. And, and we're, we're past that point. Like, you know, honestly, when you do these things through the, the government website, the only person that's going to know that your name's on something is that is your constituent is the person, your legislator. That's that that's who's going to know. Right. And if that goes any further than that, you already have the wrong person in charge. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't find the change. Oh, bro. Uh, I, I think something that also helped, you know, definitely here in the past few years, kick the door open for legalization is hemp, you know, the legalization in many states for hemp. And I think that, you know, that that's been a gateway for a lot of people that previously maybe didn't know nothing about cannabis or wasn't educated on the endocannabinoid system or all the benefits of it. The, they start to learn, you know, because it's like you Google the benefits of CBD well, cannabis is going to come up. A whole lot of things are going to come up. And then, you know, if you read this stuff, you're going to scratch your head and say, well, wait a minute here. This doesn't sound so bad, you know. And then I think also what's so important with them going city to city, town to town is I believe that puts a lot of pressure on these politicians because they can't ignore that. You know, those, those numbers speak for themselves. The support speaks for itself. And, well, it, and again, a lot of people don't want to call their legislature or they don't want to put their name on something. They're nervous. But <clears throat> the ones that do, you know, it's it's time to nip this in the bud, you know, and that's how, how I feel about it. It's like I want to push to try to get as much information about this out as I can, because, you know, while we have this momentum, because I see in Ohio right now, we have a lot of momentum and a lot of great people that are, you know, in these positions to have this put out there, this information, you know, HB 210. A lot of people don't know about it. I mm. can't, I live in Cleveland. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that, you know, we'll be talking about cannabis and then I'll say, well, you know, at least it's decriminalized in Cleveland. They don't even know. They have no clue that it's even decriminalized in their city that they live in, you know. So, and that's why sometimes the conversation gets stopped, right? Because some people are just happy enough to have their circle, just happy enough to, to have their weed and, and, and like not care. Like it, I got mine, I got mine. So it's okay. But you know, that that's why it's important to speak up and volunteer and do the things. And you guys have so much momentum, like with the small towns, I didn't realize like how, what a, what a, what a, what a, uh, what I'm going to say, uh, an angle of attack, a plan, you know, it was, it's a great plan. You know, your state and, and you're, you're making it happen. The only change.org I could find was the, uh, declaration of support for uh, the ordinance in Port Smith, which I imagine, is this how you guys been doing things? Like this is pretty 
freaking cool. Oops, wrong one. Uh, go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, like this, this change.org is this how you guys been doing things? You guys been doing a, a change.org to get the uh, message out for those certain towns? No, actually, Portsmouth was the first um, change.org that we had utilized. Um, we had been down to city council in Portsmouth and petitioned twice and failed with the initiative process. So we approached council again. Actually, council reached out to us on the third time and said, you know, I'm a new councilman. I would really like to see this passed. I seen what you guys were trying to do. So they welcomed us down uh, to really, we had a one councilman that was really giving us a hard time about everything. So I focused on his ward, uh, went around the city, nice. got the signatures just in his ward. That was the only one that he was like very no. Sure. Uh, we still, honestly, we deserve that yes vote at the end of the day from council. It was still, however, shot down once again. Wow. So, systems are very flawed i will say that um so that was a failed issue um with this we decided to go with change.org again mm. to really help push the message to everybody that needs in the state house they're not used to getting 1500 messages about cannabis being legalized in our state exactly so even if it's just 1500 1500 is better than that zero email that's hitting their box and somebody has to record it, annotate it, and log it, and put it in a record, each one, and, and, and say, this person, like, that's what's great about the process, is you can get heard, but it, it sucks about the process, you need a lot of people to hear, right? Because, like, if I just said it, submitted one, and, and that was it, then all right, I can follow it away, but if you get, like you said, 1,500, uh, that, that's that's where it's at, you know, and I was going to say, because I was kind of, when you I mean, well, that's I a very low okay. number. We got 11 and a half million people. Oh, yeah. We should be able to pull at least 5 million signatures. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> or they don't even got to come out of their house. This is the laziest you can be to still support <laughs> cannabis. You have no reason not to just go in there and sign it. <laughs> so are you guys so like I was looking for that that change.org and since I couldn't find it. I just want to direct people to your uh, you guys' Twitter at the Appalachian Normal Appalachia. Okay. Because uh, maybe you guys can share it there later. But, uh, 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 you know, just so people, you know, I imagine if, as an Ohio citizen, they should be able to fund you guys pretty easy, right? I mean, it's normal Appalachian, it's normal Ohio, right? Is that the two groups that we got for uh, norm, uh, Ohio itself? There's no normal Ohio. Oh, okay. That was shut down three years ago. No shit. Yeah. Was, was it a, 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 a personnel issue? I mean, this seems to be like the thing about activism is like there's always like a pissing contest of like just ideals, yeah. and it's like, come on, man, we just what, bro? Oh, I think you say yeah. um, yeah. the, right now we're the only chapter. Okay, so this would be a norm nice, so easy yep. to find. Is yep. that we got a good Facebook page? You seen it? Oh yeah, I like that one too. I. uh it's kind of and there's probably nine sensible pages. The sensible is the, the, the you know, because it's funny, we have a sensible group here in Washington. Like, long time ago, uh, uh, Sensible Washington was one of our early activist groups that uh, uh, was out there trying to do like a grassroots thing, and uh, it didn't fly. I got the links though, sweet. Um, but uh, uh it didn't they didn't do well because it was very grassroots uh what made it for us unfortunately was uh i502 which was run by uh uh, uh oh my goodness um that's the same group that did uh organs and uh uh it's not sensible uh shit i think i smoke a lot of weed uh but uh so is a sensible group attached to any larger group or is it just an uh, ohio group Uh, Priscilla, you want to get that one? Sensible Movement Coalition. So actually, um, there was, uh, when the normal, uh, Ohio normal chapter had shut down, uh, we all pulled together. We're all old normal members. We had all pulled together and formed what is now the Sensible Movement Coalition. And we continued to work under our own uh, nonprofit. 
And there's a sensible. And our job oh, as SMC is we go around helping to train uh, individuals to do their own sensible cities. Oh, neat. So you're helping guide people to uh, kind of like the, the city by city plan, right? Yes. We, we help. Uh, we do. We learned how to write language um, for the state house. We, you know what I mean? Everything that we do uh, under SMC is literally training everybody on how to do this. You can use home rule to, to do more than just marijuana as well. If it's a people issue, utilize it. You, you can really change your own laws. And that's the thing. I think most people feel helpless. And, 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 you know, you feel helpless when you're not doing shit. You don't try. Like, it's frustrating. The, the whole system, signature gathering, uh, getting it through your constituents, and hopefully, you know, like here in Washington State, I tried to get home grow, help get a home grow bill through, and that just um, fucked me up on the process because you have to go through the House and the Senate simultaneously, or you can do one at a time, which just makes the thing longer, and it just messes me up how alcohol prohibition was over like that, right? And then cannabis prohibition, we're still doing this lingering thing. Part of it, I imagine, is probably because you know, during alcohol prohibition, they didn't have uh, scheduling for drugs. It was just what it was. And now we got that extra hurdle. Uh, it's just, it's just insane, but you guys are doing it right. And that's freaking amazing. Hey. You know, the crazy, one of the crazy Thank things you. about prohibition era was that there were groups of people that advocated for cannabis to help you get off of alcohol back in the prohibition days that you know, I can't remember the group, what the name of it was, but, it's kind of like now, you know, I know a lot of people that struggle with substance abuse and alcoholism that now strictly use cannabis as municipally just to help them cope with whatever it is that causes them to want to drink or use whatever drug that, Dude. you know, is very beneficial. And I see yeah. them living. Well, these are people I've known a long time, you know, and I see them living a quality of life now that they never had possible before. And, and it inspires me to want to do this, to reach out more, to get the message out more, because I know so many more people that it could help. You know, it's just like, let's end well, this. You know? all, all the rules around it. Right. Because even I'm in a legal state, I can go buy weed right now. As a matter of fact, I will. But uh, <laughs> the thing is, like pro probation, uh, I have a friend. She got in trouble with alcohol. Uh, that happens. Right. But she was really going down a bad spiral. Uh, probation actually helped her. But the thing is, uh, on that probation, you can't smoke cannabis, which is the freaking dumbest thing because the cannabis is what helped her wean off the alcohol. And oh, so, no. yeah, and then luckily the, the pandemic kicked in, so there was no in-person meetings for a while, so she could smoke cannabis throughout the whole time while she's been doing this whole probation. And it's helped her. And now as we're getting toward the end of this shit, she's like, fuck, I, I, I don't... I'm doing good. She has been doing great as far as the drinking goes. So... I feel like we live in this upside down, not only the law on how we can take away your rights and your toys and your, your livelihood, but also when you do get in trouble and like what we're like, no, the fun time police, like this is obviously something that makes you feel better. So you can't have it. What thinking is this shit? You know, it's we live it's in this so exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a crazy upside down. Uh, it's Don, what's they're the, even okay. showing that the opiate and uh, alcohol and all that cannabis is helping with that. So the statistics they're there for them. Oh, especially in legal states, the statistics show that the people with an opioid, the 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 alcohol has all gone down in all the legal states because you have a safer alternative. You know, I like to say all use is medicinal use, you know, whether it's fixing my case of the Mondays or fixing cancer, you know, it's, it's all making my life and day better. Uh, I want to say, oh, for or, timelines, are we looking at any certain dates? Like Don, you're doing the small cities, small towns. What's your next town and what's the, uh, uh like deadlines you're looking at for like petitionings? Uh, our turn-ins have to be all done by, uh, sometime mid July to make the deadline, which is 90 days prior to an election, but you got to allow for process. So you got to give yourself a couple more weeks to get that done. But uh, as far as the next sit, uh, city, you know, we just, like I said, we completed MacArthur and Murray City. They're ready for turn-ins, which means the signatures have been collected. 
and are ready to go back to the clerk for the start the validation process when they go to the Board of Elections. Okay, then we got, we're planning on Laurelville, Rushville, Rutland, and we've got language for New Lexington, and we're doing this as a normal chapter. So that's it, along with what SMC is doing around the state, too. So and there's true. currently right around 79 initiatives that are currently wrote and ready to go. Oh. Um, 79 so initiatives? I, I believe right around Jolie. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. You handle a lot of the local initiatives. That is correct. We also have initiatives in West Virginia, South Carolina, and Missouri. Oh, you guys are really covering the Appalachia. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Wow. <laughs> Now, and that's the thing, too, because, you know, the term Appalachia, it, 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 it refers to, like, something specific and grown, right? So I can imagine, like, there's got to be some really good Appalachia weed. Like, like, like <laughs> the actual name, yeah. you know? I mean, I would love to go get some Kush from yeah. the land of Kush, well, but yeah. I would like to try some also, Appalachia. Uh, you know, those Appalachians are going to carry a lot of weight, too, because just like Humboldt County is a, an Appalachia, it's prime growing area you know there's a lot of fertile soil good climate for growing and everything in ohio you know once you know eventually legalize it and people are or even the 12 plants you know if a guy can home grow 12 plants oh god and live in the appalachia he's gonna have some really nice cannabis you know your varietals and, will be insane like the, if you have that home grow and just to, just let everybody have a chance to grow because that's what happened with in, in ireland with the potato famine right they only grew one type of potato, so the genetics didn't uh, didn't make the plant stronger, and so they yeah. eventually had the famine. You know, <laughs> that's, yep. and that's what I'm afraid in, in recreational states. What's going to happen? This whole seed to sell bullshit. You know, it's we don't have seed to sell for broccoli or tobacco or any of this other shit. You, you know, like why are we doing it for cannabis? And, and you know, let the grower. The grower's an artist, right? I mean, yeah. it's fucking hard. I got two stumps that are telling me in the back of my yard, like. I suck at growing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah and that's really important. You know, the, the regulation is, you know, it's almost inevitable. And that'll be part of the fight that we'll be fighting. For, right. You know, for however long until we can, you know, we all have this ideal in our head of how we want it to be, you know, and it would be great to have this open market where. It's easy to, to access a license, to be able to grow either a small micro grow or a micro craft grow or whatever the case may be. You know, that would be great. That would be ideal to put hand, money in the hands of a lot of people, you know, and, and, no, and these people aren't going to be out there getting crazy rich. You know, They're, they might be able to a little extra money, you know, just like somebody who has a small farm that goes to the farmer's market and sells a little bit of produce or whatever, you know once these stigmas break down over time, but it's definitely going to take time, you know, and, and that's the conversation, yeah. the, the progress, the constant oh, progress, yeah. keeping the pressure. Well, I think with you guys educating the, the cities and, and town, that's going to be great. Priscilla, is there any uh, deadlines for the cities or anything you got coming up that uh, people can help out with? So the cities technically, uh, they'd never die once the initiatives wrote and the city has accepted them. Jolie, that's correct, right? I don't want to, misinform i believe that the cities don't die that that is correct although we we don't like to run with the old petition um and there's multiple reasons for that oh sure the sure. thing evolves right and then and at the state level um we just have to get it done by this general assembly so we got in at the beginning of the new general assembly the 134th so now it's our time to shine we've got two years um, nice. We've already got it in a house bill. We've already got it into committee. So oh now all we got to do is get it out of committee and get it to hit that house floor. To get so it when you the say two years, do you think that's your projected for the uh, bill to get finalized or that's all you've been? No. So when I say uh, uh, two years, um, literally at the end of the 134th General Assembly, they have the like at the end of that December, they they kick out the the bill oh, so if got it doesn't you. get passed by then it's it's a dead bill yeah because bills do die in committee and uh and that's why it's important like when this normal link happens i think that's going to be a great asset to you guys uh hb 210 is definitely something people need to be looking for and trying to help you guys with hey i really appreciate you guys time uh it, you know 
uh, before I got to pick my kid up, I would love to talk to you guys more and just tear into Ohio's uh, uh, scene. Um, but I'll get this published. And I'll make sure you guys all get a link to when it goes live. I'll let you know. Uh, HB 210, but we got uh, normal Appalachia. Uh, is there anything else I should uh, direct people towards? Uh, normal guys? Appalachia, Ohio, and Sensible Movement Coalition for the decriminalization effort in the state. And also, um, don't forget anybody else that's going ahead and reaching out to the state house. There's also House Bill 60, which is to put autism on as a qualifying medical condition. And that's very important in our state as well. So if you're gonna take the time out to support 210, take that extra few minutes and support House Bill 60 as well. That's a great one. I have a friend in Idaho, uh, Tiffany Carlisle, I think her last name is. She'll, she'll I, I met her, I love okay. her death. she's amazing. Yeah, oh, awesome. So, you know, she's full on, yeah, awesome. The, the whole autism, there's a support and everything. I mean, again, qualifying conditions, it, it should be everything. It should be, I, I stood up and breathed. That should be a qualifying condition. But let me uh, just click at the end here. I appreciate you guys, thank you. Thank, thank you, you. thank you for, thank having, you for us. having us. Thank you for having us. No problem. No problem.